we're gonna make some homemade yogurt. First thing we're gonna do is start with some Greek yogurt. I've got some of my, or the last of my homemade Greek yogurt from the last batch and I just put it in the Instant Pot liner. And then we're gonna add some of the lactose-free, fat-free milk. I just use the Great Value brand. You can use Fair Life if you want. And I just start by pouring just a little bit in here instead of the whole thing. And you're gonna wanna whisk it until the yogurt is completely dissolved. You don't wanna make too many bubbles. But I just whisk it and I put a little bit so I can watch the yogurt and make sure it dissolves all the way. You can use a spoon, you can use a whisk, whatever you want. And if some bubbles do develop like there are here, because I'm stirring just a little quicker than I should, it's okay, you just let them settle down later. And I poured my milk a little faster than I should have, and that created some bubbles. But the key is to not have any clumps left of your yogurt. I got all the clumps out. I'm just pouring it around. Now, looks like there's a clump there. That's the easiest way to check is to just kind of pour it around from side to side and look for clumps that stick. We're getting there. I have a smaller whisk that really gets the clumps out good but I can't find it and I'm not sure where my husband might have put it away he's creative about where he puts dishes away sometimes I'm using the big whisk where you can tell there's lots of spaces for the clumps to get through see a couple of little bitty clumps if you have clumps it's going to affect your yogurt so be sure to get all the clumps. And trust me, that's the most time consuming part. The rest of it is set it and forget it. I see one right there. And the more the yogurt gets incorporated with the milk, the less the bubbles show up too. And you do have to dip it back down when you turn the bowl. That way if there are clumps, they'll stick to the bowl again. I got them all this time. Oh, there's one. Get one more good stir. And this time I'm gonna go a little bit faster because the bubbles aren't that big of a problem anymore. And we can add the rest of the milk in now. And you wanna go slow so you don't create any more bubbles. Just making a half a gallon you can make a whole gallon as long as you have a couple of tablespoons of plain Greek yogurt with active probiotics in there when active cultures when you uh, buy your yogurt or some of the yogurt you've made in the past as long as you've got active and alive cultures two tablespoons or more will do and I use plain yogurt. You can use a vanilla yogurt if you want a little bit of sweetness to it, but I like plain, because that way I can use it to substitute for sour cream or mayonnaise um, in recipes. Okay, that should be good. 
Now I'm just gonna put my liner into my Instant Pot. And when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the yogurt button. I do for 12 hours. Put the lid on, you can use your regular crock pot lid and just let it go. After the 12 hours come up, we'll be back. Good morning, it's seven o'clock and my cycle just ended for the yogurt. So the easy thing that's gonna happen now is we're gonna take our liner out of the Instant Pot, set it to the side to cool and put it in the refrigerator to cool off in there and get chilled. When you take it out, you're gonna see all this condensation. You're gonna try not to put that back into your yogurt. So when you take your lid off, just drain it over your sink and your yogurt's gonna look like this. It's gonna be stiff enough that if you put, were to put a spoon in there, it would stand straight up because we let it cook for 12 hours, which is what you ideally want for Greek yogurt. And like I said, um, you're gonna wanna keep the lid on if you want to just dry the lid off with a paper towel and put it back on. Um, I normally just put some saran wrap over the top, but that'll build up some more condensation. But while you're letting it cool on the counter, just to get that heat off the bottom, I take the lid off and just let it air out. Um, yeah, but you can either dry your lid off and let it sit or throw some saran over that. But what we're gonna do after four hours is put it into our strainer. The strainer I have, I bought off Amazon. I'll link it below. Um, but if you have a nut milk bag or some cheesecloth, you can put it over a bowl and do that and we'll strain the whey off in about, like I said, four hours, just so that it's cooled off. And then we'll let it strain for about eight to 12 hours. I let mine strain for 12 hours. All right, so I'll see you guys, like I said, in four hours. Okay, so I just got the yogurt out of the fridge and I poured it out of the Instapot liner and into my yogurt drain strainer and you'll see it's starting to drip the whey into the bottom but i poured the half gallon i bought the half gallon size you can buy gallon size strainers and i'm just going to let this strain till tomorrow morning when i wake up because it is 7 27 i didn't get home till late so it sat in the fridge all day while i was at work this will probably fill to about here by tomorrow morning. I like to drain mine a lot so it's nice, thick, silky Greek yogurt. Put this back in the fridge and I'll see y'all in the morning. Okay, you guys. Let's take a look at what I got here. You can see just how much whey has come out of here from letting it drip for so long. Look how beautiful and creamy that is. Now I've got one hand, so I can't put it into my container with one hand like this. So what I'm going to show you is just how beautiful and creamy and thick this Greek yogurt is for letting it drain for over 12 hours. Give me one sec. Okay, what I did was flip this over like a jello ring and watch. All that good yogurt came right out because it's so thick and beautiful. And look at all that whey. You can use that as a sourdough starter. Um, you can look up yogurt whey. Make sure you look up yogurt whey and find all the ways you can use it. No pun intended. Um, and basically that's taken most of the sugar out of the yogurt, which is why I let it drain for so long. You can let it drain and get as much whey out as you want, but about 12 hours is appropriate. So then I just take this and I literally dump it into my container. This is a pretty big container, but the smaller container I have might have been too small. And I just get a little bake, baker scraper and scrape it on in. And that's it. And I've got this, um, you can save the whey and add it back in. And this is gonna drain off some whey as it sits over time. But I just save this and I use it as sour cream. I use it as mayo. 
substitute um, and that's where you can add some weight back in if you need it to be thinner but I don't like it to be thinner I'll even use this as a cream cheese substitute so yeah that's how I do my homemade Greek yogurt thanks for watching bye